What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the best 8-inch Android tablet on the market. This is the brand new 2024 Lenovo Legion Y700, and some of you may be familiar with the Legion Y700 brand, and that's because Lenovo has released a few over the years, and we've taken a look at all of them. It started with the Snapdragon 870, then they moved up to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but now with the new 2024 version of the Y700, we've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. I've been really excited about getting my hands on this, and of course, we know what that Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 can do. It's actually a really powerful ARM SoC, but when it comes to the form factor of these tablets, these are definitely some of my favorites. This unit here has a 165 hertz, 8.8 inch display, and at the time of making this video, the tablet I've been going to lately is the new iPad mini, given the form factor and the performance it puts out, and that's because we haven't had something like this hit the market on the Android side of things. This thing has some really great features built in. I'll be going over most of it in this video, but the first thing I wanted to take a look at was the I.O. Now down here, we've got USB Type-C. Now unfortunately, this is only a USB 2.0 port, but with these Y700 tablets, we've got another USB Type-C port over here on the side. This is USB-C 3.2, and it does support display out. Actually, 4K up to 60 hertz, but the cool thing here is it does 1440p at 120 or even 1080 at 120. And yes, we do have a PC or a desktop mode built in with the software here. Moving over to the other side, we've got our power button, volume rocker, and a micro SD card slot. So this will support up to a one terabyte card. But unfortunately, one thing we don't have here is a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. This might sound odd, but another thing I found interesting about this tablet is it does come with the charger and USB type C cable. It's actually a 65 watt fast charger. If you've bought a tablet or a phone recently, you know, a lot of them don't come with the charger anymore. And when it comes to the overall specs here, like I mentioned, this is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. It's a 4 nanometer SoC. We've also got that at Reno 750 GPU. You can get this in two different variants with 12 gigs and 256 gigabytes of storage or 16 gigs and 512 gigabytes of storage. But both of them utilize LPDDR5X for the RAM and UFS 4.0 for the storage. All of them support that micro SD card, so we can upgrade the storage if we wanted to go with the lower end version. And I'll tell you, 12 gigs is going to be more than enough for a tablet like this. In fact, the version we're taking a look at in this video is the 12 gig 256. We've also got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.4, an 8.8 inch 165 hertz display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It's an IPS panel, 98% DCI-P3 with up to 500 nits of brightness, but these do look really good. It's very similar to something that you'd find on the Lenovo Legion Go handheld gaming console, but instead of 144, this does 165. And of course, this is running Android 14 with their ZUI 16.1. The tablet itself, super quick, very portable. Like I mentioned, these are definitely some of my favorite form factors given the size of this. It's definitely not a huge tablet, but the screens on these are coming in larger than most phones on the market right now. So if you did want a bit of a bigger screen, this would be an awesome option, but it's not overwhelming. It's not a 10 inch or a 12 inch display. And in some cases, I think uh, Samsung released like a 14 inch one a couple of years ago, which was pretty crazy for a tablet. And with that Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, I've been able to get everything done on this. I've mainly been doing some gaming and emulation on this because it is that Lenovo Legion brand. But if you wanted to get some work done here, there is a desktop mode. We'll take a look at that in just a bit. But the first thing I wanted to show you here were a few benchmarks. First up, we've got Geekbench 6, single core, 2,224. Multi, 6,881. So yeah, I mean, it's fallen right in line with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and a decently cool device. Checking out a GPU benchmark with 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, 4,857. And you can see at the very bottom, this beat 92% of the other devices that have run this benchmark, which is pretty good for a tablet. And finally, I ran the N22 benchmark. We've got over 2 million here. And if you take a look down the list, you can see, yeah, I mean, it's definitely hanging in with the best of them, if not a bit better on that GPU, coming in at 820,000. Since we've got a Legion branded tablet, first and foremost, I mean, gaming comes to mind, but we do have that desktop mode built in. Now this actually supports end screen desktop mode and the screen on this isn't really big enough to do much with it, but I mean, it's definitely here. Also works over USB type C. I'll show you that in a bit because that's actually one of my favorite features here. But moving over to some gaming, just starting off light here so I can give you a look at everything. Swiping over from the left hand side at any time while playing a game, we'll open up our gaming settings. 
And from here, we've got the basics. Screen recorder, do not disturb. There's a voice changer built in. There's also a key mapper. So if you wanted to play a game that doesn't natively support controllers, you can map it directly from there, i.e. something like Genshin Impact. Right now we're in balance mode, but if we press this, we're now in performance mode, which is going to take the clocks up on the GPU and CPU. We've also got a very low power mode, which will save a lot of battery. And with something like Minecraft, I mean, you could get away in very low power mode, even running at 120 hertz. And speaking of that, we have an on-screen FPS counter. This will also give us some extra information, but I mainly use it for that on-screen FPS counter. So we've got that real-time counter. And with Minecraft here, just in balanced mode, we're at 120 FPS. We do have a 165 hertz display, but for some reason, I can't get up to 165 with this game. I'm not sure if it's locked for everybody or not, or if the tablet's just not whitelisted yet to go to 165. But on a mobile device, running this game at 120 continuously, in my opinion, is more than enough. This tablet also has a pass-through charging mode, which means if you've got it plugged in, you can enable it. And basically, wall power is going to be sent to power everything in the tablet. It's not going to touch the battery, and this could definitely increase the life of the battery over time. Now I wanted to show off a few more Android games running, and we're going to move into some emulation. And finally, take a look at desktop mode. Asphalt 9, maxed out here, 60 FPS, looking good. By the way, I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. With Diablo Immortal, we can go to 60 FPS high settings. There's also a very high or an ultra setting that's grayed out on this tablet. I've actually never been able to enable it with any of these devices that I've ever tested, but high at 60 with this game looks great on this 8.8 inch IPS display. And of course, I had to test out Genshin Impact. I'm at 60 FPS, highest settings, and that frame counter just stays locked at 60. Really wish we had the option to go to 120 on Android. Unfortunately, the developers have not enabled it for us. Over on iOS, yeah, we can. We've always been able to use a controller. And usually, you have to download a third-party application to map a controller. But since we've got the built-in key mapper here, we can program basically any controller, like an Xbox controller, which is what I'm using right now. Very easy to set up, and there are pre-made profiles that you can download. Now I wanted to show off some emulation, and first up we've got some PSP using PPSSPP, 8x resolution, and we can go to 10 with games like this. God of War is going to run just fine at 8x, I mean PSP on that Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is awesome. Next up, we've got some GameCube emulation, Auto Modalista, I'm using the OpenGL backend because we've got a Snapdragon chip, and just to show you here, I've got the resolution set to 4x, so when it comes down to it, this is actually running at 2560 by 2112, so we're definitely upscaled here with GameCube. And I went through and tested a bunch of different games. Now, one that gave me issues at 4x was Rogue Squadron 2, and it usually does on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. You have to drop that down to 3x to alleviate any kind of dips under 60, but it does run good, and it still looks great at 3x resolution on this display. And finally, some PS2 emulation using Neither SX2. 4X resolution, I'm using the OpenGL backend here, Gran Turismo 4. At a 4X resolution with this game, it's running it at 2560 by 1792. Now, I do consider this a harder one to emulate, but one that gives a lot of chips a run for its money is God of War 2, but even with that, we can run it at 4X resolution. 
I've always had really good luck with GameCube, Wii, and PS2 emulation on this chipset. And of course, down the road, we're going to get something more powerful. But right now, in this 8.8 inch form factor, this is the fastest tablet that you can buy. Now we can check out my favorite part of this tablet, and that's desktop mode. So I've got a monitor here that supports USB Type-C video in, but you can always use an adapter, USB Type-C to HDMI. As Soon as we plug it in, it's gonna give us a prompt. Do we wanna go to extended mode or mirror mode? Right now, obviously, we're in mirror mode. We've got zero latency because we're using a wired connection. And this is great. I mean, it definitely works good enough to go to a larger display, but we've got those black bars on the side because it's not matching up with the aspect ratio of that external screen. But once we enable extended mode, it's basically going to give us a desktop style interface over on the larger display. It's going to fill the whole screen for us. And this works great with a mouse and keyboard, but it does have a built in on screen touchpad you can use. I'll give you a look at the settings because there's quite a few. The monitor I've got this plugged into only does up to 60 hertz, but you can see we can go to 4K 60. And if the screen supported it, we can do 1440 and 1080 up to 120. Another thing we have here is kind of a placement mode. So if you've got a mouse and keyboard connected and you want to use them between the two screens, you can set this up to go to the left hand side, right, top or bottom. It's actually a really nice setup and I'm going to move in just a bit closer, connect this to my game capture to give you a look. And with something like this, we've now got a full screen experience. Down here, we've got our app menu. It does have resizable windows. So up at the top of each screen, we'll get these three little dots. We can go full screen, floating window, we can minimize. And with all of these, we can go ahead and bring them on out. Multiple apps at the same time. We'll just do Geekbench here. Open up. Let's just do 3D Mark. Have a few apps on the screen at once. Everything seems to be scaling pretty nicely, but I'm sure we will run into a few apps that don't scale properly. And to give you an idea, minimize. And if we want to go full screen, we've got the option. We can always bring it right back down also. Floating window. So yeah, this is pretty cool. And with games like, let's say, Call of Duty Mobile, we can go full screen with it. Have our controller connected. And we can play right here on the larger screen. And it does look really good on this larger display. Earlier today, I was messing around with a little bit of emulation, but I did notice that we don't have the gaming centric settings here that we do when we're using the built in screen. So we don't have those performance modes, but I do believe it kind of automatically goes up there because everything I tested just works really well on this extended display. You could definitely use this as an Android powered desktop PC. And if you're interested in seeing kind of a dedicated video like that, just let me know in the comments below. But overall, I'm really glad we have that extended or desktop mode built in with the new Lenovo Legion Y700. So yeah, really glad to see this upgrade from Lenovo, and I will have at least one more video. I definitely want to spend a little more time with this tablet. I've got a lot that I want to test on it. We need to get battery life out of the way and everything like that. But if you're interested in seeing anything else on this thing in my next one, just let me know in the comments below. I wouldn't mind testing out some PC games on this thing using the WinLater application, or maybe even just doing a dedicated desktop mode video. So if there's anything you want to see, let me know in the comments. And if you want to learn a little more, maybe pick one of these up. I'll leave some links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.